Welcome to Taisha's Kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to make three types of Japanese pickles. So in Japanese cuisine, there are quite a number of different kinds of pickles. If you go to a restaurant in Japan and then you order like a set menu, you will almost always have a type of pickle. It's sometimes called hashiyasume, which means a resting of chopsticks. And it just kind of has that refreshing element for the whole meal because uh, you have the main dish that can be heavy and then after a while your mouth may want to a little something different. So a lot of the Japanese pickles have this kind of refreshing element to it. Today I'm going to show you three different variations that are very easy to make. Each process takes no more than like 5 to 10 minutes. Well, except for the soaking part, that's going to take a while. You don't have to do anything. So the actual process that you're going to do is going to take no more than 5 to 10 minutes. So I hope you enjoy it and hopefully try it yourself. Then, let's get started. Here are the ingredients for three different kinds of Japanese pickles. First, we're going to make asazuke or light pickle with cabbage and cucumber. And we're also going to use kombu kelp for that. And for the seasoning, we're just going to use salt. And secondly, we're going to make soy sauce pickle with white radish or daikon radish. And for the seasoning, we're going to use soy sauce and sugar and a little bit of chili. And then lastly, we're going to make sweet and sour pickle with regular radish. And for the seasoning, we're going to use sugar and also rice wine vinegar. If you don't have rice wine vinegar, then you can just use regular white wine vinegar or apple vinegar. And today we're going to be using a Ziploc for the pickles, but if you don't have Ziploc or if you don't want to use Ziploc, then you can use regular Tupperware or any container would do. So let's cut up the ingredients. So for today, I'm just going to use two leaves. So I'm just going to take this stem part. I'm going to cut these stem part extra thin so that they'll get pickled faster. And then I'm just going to cut these into bite-sized pieces. And then also the cucumber, take the top and the bottom off. And I'm just going to cut these into thin slices. And then kombu kelp, I'm just going to cut into small pieces. So, in a bigger ziplock, I'm gonna put in the, all the vegetables and also the kombu. So, in this, you wanna put about 2% of salt. So, if I measure this, this is about 280 gram minus the ziplock, then I would say it's about 250 gram. And then, for every 250 gram of vegetable, you wanna put about 5 gram of salt, that is about a teaspoon. So, then about a teaspoon, I'm gonna put this in here. You want to get a lot of air in, and then lock it, and then this is why I like using a Ziploc, because you can just mix it very easily and evenly. And then get the air out, and then what you want to do is you want to kind of push it together so that the vegetable will get damaged and then salt will sink in better. Now I'm going to just let it sit for a couple hours to a day or so. Next, we're going to make the shoyuzuke or the soy sauce pickle. So for this, I'm going to use the top part because the bottom part you want to use it for cooking, the top part you want to use it for raw. And I'm going to just take the top off and today I'm just going to use a third or so. If there's a like damaged part, then you're just going to take it out. If it's a little darker, it's going to get that part off. If you want to peel the white radish, of course you can. I don't really think it's necessary, so I'm just going to use it like that. And then I'm going to cut these into bite-sized pieces. So this you don't want to cut it too thin, it's about half a centimeter or so. And by the way, this way of cutting is called ichogiri or ginkgo leaves cut because this kind of looks like a ginkgo leaf. Just a little trivia. Just going to put it in here in the Ziploc. And then in this, I'm gonna put in two tablespoons of soy sauce. And then one tablespoon of sugar. And then here, if you wanna make it a little spicy, then you can put a little chili. If you don't like it spicy, then you can just skip the chili. And whatever you want, like that much. And then what you want to do is you wanna to try to get as much air out as possible. 
And then you want to try to get the soy sauce all around. After a couple of hours, you'll notice that the daikon radish is going to give out the water, and then this is going to be much, much liquidy. And then at that point, you want to squeeze the air much more. And then for the daikon, you want to let it sit for at least a day or so. Then let's make the sweet and sour pickle with the radish. For this recipe, I'm not going to be using the leaves, so I'm just going to cut this off here like this. But don't throw these away. You can use this for salad or you can fry it. Uh, it's also very delicious. I'm going to take that off and then just going to cut into pieces like this. Then we're going to put this in a Ziploc. For this recipe, we're going to put 2 tablespoons of sugar. And then also 2 tablespoons of rice wine vinegar, or any vinegar. And half a teaspoon of salt. And then, again, also for this, we're going to mix it like this. And then also for this as well, you're going to try to get as much air as possible. Then, this is finished. And don't worry too much about the sugar that's not dissolved yet. It will dissolve in like the next hour or so. And for this also, you want to let it sit at least overnight. So here we have three different kinds of pickles. And as you can see, the amount has decreased and it's gotten much softer after now like 10-15 minutes. Then at this point, what you want to do is you know, open up a little bit and then you want to try to get as much air out as possible, like so. And in this way, it'll have a similar effect as a vacuum that all the surface will be touching the sauce. And here the daikon radish has already gotten softened, so what you want to do is you want to kind of open it a little bit and then try to squeeze the air out as much as possible without leaking. And then you have very little air in here, and that's why I like to use a Ziploc, so that this will get pickled very evenly. And this also, this has gotten softened, so I'm just gonna get as much air out as possible. Like this way. Then, let's go to the next day. So a day has passed and the pickles are ready. So as you can see, they're all good pickled. They're all kind of soaking up the juice. And the radish, they kind of give out the color of the skin. That's why I like making pickles with these. Then let's serve. So this is finished, let's eat. Okay, let's eat. So this is a bit strange to have just only pickles and rice, but oh well. So let's start with the asazuke. This is the light pickle with cabbage and cucumber. Itadakimasu. Mmm. The amount of salt is perfect. Mmm. Mmm. So this salt is really bringing out the sweetness of the vegetable. And there's also this very fine aroma of the kombu kelp. Very delicious. Let's have the soy sauce pickle. Itadakimasu. Mmm. This crunchiness of the white radish is really delicious. So this combination of soy sauce and sugar is, is the same as the teriyaki sauce and this just masters the white radish perfectly. And there's that kick from the chili. It's really great. Mm. Mm. And lastly, the radish pickle. So I think it's really cute to have this kind of pink color. Mmm. Mmm. So this sweet and sour pickle is distinctly different from the other two. The other two are solely based, but it's got the sweetness and the sourness. This is very refreshing. Mm. Well, if you haven't noticed, this sweet and sour is pretty much the same combination as the sushi rice. Of course, it is going to match the rice. So these pickles, or any pickle in Japan, are meant to match rice. And for that reason, these pickles are a little bit too salty to be just eaten as it is. Mmm.
Mm, that was delicious. Today I just show you with three vegetables, or actually four vegetables, but you can of course use other vegetables like carrots, celery, what else, eggplant, turnip or like napa cabbage, tomato or avocado, they're also good as well. And then some vegetable you might want to pre-cook before you pickle them, like asparagus, broccoli, cauliflower, or like a zucchini. So uh, just be creative with it and you never know what you'll find and it might be your new favorite. So I hope this video is informative for you, I hope it gives you some new ideas and if you like what you saw, please hit that like button. Otherwise, I look forward to see you in the next video. Bye!